Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah, oh, you gotta oh, love that. That's pretty cool. This time on Jester's Garage, we check out the historical Olive Wrecker. There will be some old stories and some new plans. And we'll take it around the block a couple times. So stick around and learn about this 41 Army truck in Northern Idaho. My 84-year-old dad, John Hahn, just bought this old truck. He drove this truck when he was in high school from 14 years old to 18 years old. So it's been pulling on his heartstrings for a long time. He was in the Army from 58 through 62, so no doubt there was trucks kind of like this when he was serving. This rig here, however, was the first truck he drove that was bigger than a pickup. Chevy, same as this, up in the mountains skidding logs for two summers with that. Well, then Dad bought a 20 Caterpillar, which I have one inside, just like it, and I run that little 20 all summer the two years I was 13. Dad had a 49 International pickup, and I drove it. it had a crash box transmission in it. You can shift that, you can shift anything. That's how I learned to drive. And then when I moved to Kamii when I was 13. I bought me a Model A Ford in freshman high school, and I went down, I was selling the grit paper, went down by Les Olive, not knowing who he was, and I said, do you want to buy a grit paper? And he said, no, but I'll put you to work. I went home, walking about four feet off the ground, and told Mom, I got a job at the gas station. And I was just out of the eighth grade. Well, then I started driving this. So I drove the Doodlebug 20 Cat 49 uh, International Pickup, and my Model A Ford, and this was the next rig I drove. The first big truck I drove. So is everything still functional on it, John? It, it, it's 100% ready to go. Lucky Brandt down at Cami, I bought it for site, and he went through the brakes. He went through, got all new brake cylinders, got new uh, mass cylinder, new carburetor, got 270 Jimmy in it, which is upgrade from what was originally in it. And uh, it's ready to roll, just a few little minor things. Wow. We're going to repaint it. I'll show you pictures. Uh, it was uh, this yellow, this cab was yellow from here up. It had a black hood, and this was all black along here, and this was red. The middle part here was all red. And uh, so, according to Jess and Clint, we kind of decided that when we get it all done, we're going to go back to the original color. That's cool. Which I have a picture of. Lucky drove it all the way up here from Kamii. And then and the brakes are fine and the clutch is fine, everything's fine. And he goes in there to start it up and the clutch pedal's all the way to the ground, all the way to the floor. He's like, what in the heck? And so I'm in there and I'm gonna try to adjust it and it's the nuts are all as far as they're gonna go. And and there's I'm trying to investigate it. We pull the floorboard out of it. We're trying to figure it out. And we finally 
I'm starting to trace this cable all the way back over to here and dad inadvertently he was telling us about it and he pulls this thing back like that yeah it was all locked in that clutch is stuck So what did we learn? We learned that uh, that clutch I, is all the way down. I couldn't get that clutch to, to move, so I couldn't put it in gear. So we took the floorboard out, and uh, there's a cable right here. What's the cable for? The cable. See, this all this won't come back. See here. The cable looks like it goes back towards the back. So we went all the way back here, and Dad had pulled this back so like that. You go like that. Now the clutch. Up there. It's back engaged. Now the clutch works fine now. Yeah. And we're good to go. Okay. Yeah, open the door. <laughs> cool. Super. Let's take a drive. Okay. So you got to have this this way. Yeah. Anytime you're driving the vehicle, that's got to be forward. Yeah. Perfect rig for an 84 year old to buy. <laughs> Got to have a salt ladder just to get into it. winch back here that's hooked to here this must be just for it's gotta be for for uh, retrieving yeah it's got you gotta it was hand crank oh that's a hand crank wow crank it starts right here crank here it goes on here and then this is a, a man a manual winch right here okay there must be a planetary or something in here because that'd be a lot of cranking anyway put this on here and then you can gotta put that pin through there mm -hmm. i think i think lucky made this okay because it didn't have one on it Wow. Can you imagine pulling something out of a canyon with that thing by hand? Excuse me. Here's a front winch here, and the cable goes around here, and there's a roller right here, which is stuck. There's a roller right have to there. Get a, you may have to get a mill right to fix that. Yeah. And then you take the, the cable and it hooks to a hook, mm -hmm. and then there's a chain. And the, on the military, it showed pictures of a chain come up here, around here, and you put the big hook here. Mm -hmm. You go here and then down to the case. This Chevrolet has these uh, round rods like this, mm -hmm. all one piece. Right. And then these here got to be in here, which we're going to, I got to add to that. Yep. To make them original. They're a cross hatch. The Jimmy, the Jimmy was straight up and out piece, just like this, straight up and down, mm -hmm. and there was no rod like this. Oh, how about that? Totally different. And then Jimmy had a GMZ right across the front here. Oh, no. Somebody along the way here put a major pull on this thing, and he bent this bent this arm back here. And this yeah, that back that end. rear plate is busted. Put a forklift under that side over there, pick it up about six inches, and then we'll put this up against the log loader on the other end, so we're not gonna we won't move. And I'll take the big forklift right in here and push that back in. Mm -hmm. It's it's so busted. It almost. I mean, give it give it your best shot, but as a millwright, I'm telling you, we may have to cut that off and put it in a big press, and then we can weld it back on. It's all half of it needs to be rewelded anyway. Yeah. Because a lot of times when something's this one's got twist in it, it's pushed down, it's bent out. 
and it will never it's be the same. Years, eh? It's been, it's been, uh, wow, it's been used and abused. My oh, another goodness. thing, too, uh, come on, wow, that, thing, that thing's whole thing's back. twisted. Yeah, my goodness, yeah, look at that, it is twisted. See, another thing, is wow, up on top. yeah, that, that goes up like see that. It here. This well, direction that folds you see up to here, and you put a pin behind it. Uh huh. Then that jib goes over the back, and that raises your lift up about three or four oh, feet. Oh, you can take and, and move this shiv. Now, this gentleman right here, he's probably got how many million miles you got under your belt? Four million. Four million miles. He's been driving big rigs since the 70s, right? He is literally, he had one truck uh, bought for him brand new and he put like 900 and some thousand, almost got a million miles out. He had to have his ticker worked on. They, they loaned it out to somebody and the guy burned it up before he came back to work. A short lineup of Art Deco Chevy trucks, and it is eclectic. We've got the Doodle Bug, the Trap Wagon, and the Olive Wrecker. Now, let's get down to some history. You just bought this truck. I did. And you surprised me with it. My <laughs> goodness. Wow, how cool is that? Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought it would be a big surprise. I bought it on the 5th of February. Uh -huh. Boy, it's hard to keep that away from you. Boy, no kidding. Yeah, every time you said something about it, I was like, don't even <laughs> don't even go there. Because I know how you are. Yeah. You're going to want to just give me a couple hints. And then, I, I, like I said, I don't want no hints. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even want to think about it. Yeah. So, no, I walked in there. Man, that was amazing. Stop right there. Put your head up or, or take your hat off, maybe. <laughs> no, it's not that high. <laughs> there you go, now I can see your face. Okay, go ahead and look now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, did you acquire that? I did. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's cool. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. This is the ultimate. Army truck, 46 army truck. 46, 41. 41. But I drove this when I was 14 years old. Wow, I could look at this thing forever. Goodness. It's got a 270 Jimmy in it. It does. And it runs like a top. Oh my. There's word. nothing there's nothing mechanically wrong with it. Oh, you you get in and drive it right now. You could you want to? Oh, I'd love to drive it today. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take the uh, Yeah. Lucky Brent had this for several years. 
I knew Lucky from oh. before. Oh. I knew his dad really well, right. John Brandt up in Stites. Oh. And uh, I saw it down at his his place several times and drove oh. by there and stopped and Google and Google over it, you know, and everything. Right. And we traded some bike parts and stuff like that. And, you know, okay. Got to be real good friends. Uh, you and you and his dad go back a ways. Curve back, curve back in high school. So, so, so Lucky got this from another gentleman who had probably got it from Les. No, it, it it changed hands three or four times. Okay. Yeah. So when when did Les get rid of this? I don't have any idea. Okay. I'm gonna check with Bob and find out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this truck came from Hawaii, right? Well, the way I understand it, Les bought it for fifteen hundred dollars. It's a 1941 Chevrolet military truck. He was still in the crate in Hawaii, and he bought it in 1947. So it was six years old, and it had never been assembled? No, it was a brand new truck, six years wow. old. Wow. And, and so, it was running a Chevrolet motor at the time? Yeah. I'm not sure which one it was. See, the, the 216 did not, did not uh, pass military inspection. No, it, they, the military is probably what drove Chevrolet to have a full pressure system. Probably. Yeah, I, I would assume. Well, I was talking to Merle Burnett, and I'm going to go down and talk to him because he knows this thing. He rode probably more than anybody else. Oh, wow. He's now, who's this guy? Who's Merle? Merle is a kid that uh, worked for last same time I did. He oh. was about four or five years older than me. Oh, he's and, still around? Oh, he's still around. Oh, you need to go talk to him. You need to go talk to him. I'd love to go talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> Merle's a great guy. Yeah, because this is going to be probably more than one episode. It'd be great to be able to talk to him. Merle who? Merle Burnett. Merle Burnett. All right. We'll, in, in we'll have to do that. I'll come up and get you one of these times. We'll go down and visit Merle. You see, he's about four or five years older than me. Wow. So that's an old guy. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really old guy. Yeah. But Merle drove this, uh, you know, for less. Well, back up to the to less getting it. Less bought it from Hawaii, 1500 bucks. I don't know mm -hmm. what the shipping would have cost him. Yep. And then he brought it to Kamii and... Uh, Put it all together. Yep. And then he built a wrecker on it, him and another guy. Yep. And then they sat around wishing somebody would have a wreck so they could use a wrecker. Oh my goodness. And so, <laughs> this was obviously before you was in the picture because oh yeah, this was in 47. And this was the story that was probably going around the shop. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's more than folklore. Or more. Um, I think Merle told me that story. Oh, Merle did. Okay. Yeah. Not and then I uh, went to work for Les, and then, of course, his record was only seven years old. Yeah. Pretty new rig. From and the I time knew, it was assembled. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I drove it when I was, you know, there to go uh, get a local. I couldn't go on a wreck. I did, I went on wrecks with Merle. But you couldn't drive it. But I couldn't wreck. drive it, uh, you know, during the wreck thing. Yeah, because you're only 14 year old kid. Yeah. But I was able to do that. Right. You know. Yep. And then if there was a local pool someplace. And, and you know, Mer Merle was this old guy at 19 years old. Well, he was like 22. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, uh, yep. I uh, would go make a local tow somewhere. Yep. But we worked every third night mm -hmm. because there were three gas stations. And we every third night we were open and every third Sunday was open. Okay. So the late night at 11 o'clock when I went to work with Helen Olive, I had to put the record to bed. Oh. And so I had to back it into the shop to put it to bed every every third night and every Sunday. Oh my goodness, how fun is that? And this great big old Pepsi truck, uh -huh. and they couldn't let that freeze at night besides security. Yeah. And so they would rent a spot from the Pepsi guy was in town. They would mm -hmm. rent a spot from the from Olive, and I'd have to park I'd have to park that old Pepsi truck inside the and shop. They, these were the big plastic two liter bottles, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he and he gave us a he gave me a Jerry Roberts um, a case of Pepsi for for keeping his truck clean and washing mm. it and doing all this oh, like wow. that. And we put it back in the back. And every time we wanted a cold Pepsi, we get a hot Pepsi and go put it in the cooler and get out a cold Pepsi. And Les got on to us, "What are you doing?" And I said, well, well, we did this. And he got mad at us because he said, "Well, I got to pay for a cooler that Pepsi." Oh, brother. <laughs> So what's your plans with this? Well, uh, let's look at this. Let's look at it from a different perspective. Here. When I first got, you know, Lucky said he wanted to sell this thing, and I said, wow. And so we talked about leaving the patina on it. Uh -huh. That's why this original was yellow up here, black hood, black fenders, and then uh, 
and then this is red. We'll have to look at that picture to see how the printing was. Right. And the color that it was when we had the, the okay. uh, yeah. And the phone number is only two digits. Thirty-two yeah. cameo. You got it. This has been a little workhorse, you know, and it's been around the horn two or three times, and yeah. several people have owned it. Yep. And it's really done its work. Right. You know, we thought maybe just leave it the patina on it, and then when Jess got <coughs> here, we thought, well, maybe we better go back to the original <coughs> yeah. uh, yellow, red, and black. And I don't know what the hoys would probably gray, maybe, or something. We don't, we'll figure it out. Uh, another thing I've got on a movie yep. is Myrtle Burnett. They had a, a demolition derby. Uh huh. And uh, they would take, had a ramp like this. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those. And they'd take this wrecker. Yep. And with the big push block on the front, uh -huh. and they take them old cars, and they'd give them a push, and those cars would go up on that ramp and roll like his and roll. Right. And I got a movie of this truck pushing them cars. Wow. Is that part of the stuff that we've got on this? Yeah. Because I, I can remember, I didn't realize this was what was pushing. Yeah, this is pushing. Wow. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of Jester's Garage. Thanks for watching what I would hope is the first episode of the Olive Wrecker.